Today we're looking at trouble code 1335. That's for the crankshaft position sensor REF. And if you're not exactly sure where that's located on your vehicle, just do a quick Google image search, do a quick web search. You can go to a site specific for your vehicle and you can often dig up quite quickly some diagrams showing where the sensor is located. And of course, this repair video will be listed on our website at carsandtoys.net under auto repair and in the trouble code section on the site. Now let me show you exactly where the sensor is located on this vehicle. If we take a look, let me turn on a light. Right here is your crankshaft and directly below it, this is where the sensor is located. So the first step that we need to do is remove the harness connector. Now where my thumb is, there's a tab, you just press down on the tab, remove the harness, and this is your harness connector. Now what we're going to do is a continuity test. Continuity means two points make a connection. To do this test you'll need a digital multimeter and we'll quickly verify if we do indeed have continuity. Now if you don't have a multimeter you can pick them up at Sears, Advanced Auto Parts, AutoZone, Home Depot, Lowe's, they all have them. In this case this is the symbol you want. You need this symbol on the multimeter. This lets us know that we're in the continuity setting and this is the sound that you want to hear. So in this case, if you take a look at the harness connector, we have two terminals. This is terminal number one. This is terminal number two. In this case, we need terminal number two. Again, if you're not sure which terminal, just do a quick web search. You can often pick up, even the image search uh, results, you can often pick up which terminal to touch. So in this case, it's number two. The red lead coming from the multimeter will place to number two. Just slightly, you don't want it to deform anything in this, in this harness connector. And working in this area, sometimes it could be a little hard finding good ground. That's the black wire coming from the multimeter. But if we take a look at the oil pan, the drain uh, bolt right here, there you go. So that verifies that we do have continuity. If you're not getting a reading here, then just check the wires back here. They can be frayed, maybe they've melted, maybe one is completely beat up. Uh, maybe the uh, coating is off. It could be anything. Just make sure that it's in good shape, the wiring back here. If that looks okay, then you could have a problem with engine ground or a uh, sub-harness. In this case, there's a sub-harness that this runs up to. But you have to look specific into your vehicle. But very, very often, it's just because these wires are frayed. Now, we've verified that we do have continuity. So the last step is going and testing the sensor itself. So we're going to remove the sensor from the motor, put it on the bench. And there's your sensor. So now we have the crank sensor on the bench here. And as you can see, it's in good nick. You wanna check that there's no chipping, just like the cam sensor we did last week. You want to make sure that there's no chipping on the end of the sensor. This one looks to be in very good shape. And to verify if it is still functional, you need to do an ohms or a resistance test. Now to do that, you need the multimeter again and you want the ohm setting. That's this guy right here. And all that you do is you take the ends of the multimeter and you touch the prongs inside the sensor. Just to do this so it's a little bit easier, I'm going to use these alligator clips. You don't have to do this. This is just so uh, it's a little bit easier to handle with. But again, you don't have to do this. Okay, then we take Mr. Alligator Clip red to red. Now it doesn't matter which prongs you touch inside the sensor. And then black to black. And let's see what we have. Okay, so we're at point, let me bring this into you so you guys can see this. We're in the kilo ohm setting. Kilo means 1,000, of course. So 0.531 multiplied by 1,000, and you get 531 ohms. So this sensor is in great shape. Now, if you do not get a reading here, or your reading is very, very low, then the sensor is bad, and you need to replace it.